Broadcasting live from the Wellness Wonderland, you're listening to the Wellness Wonderland Radio. I'm Katie, and each week I chat with the most inspirational people on the planet on how to stay inspired in all areas of life. As you listen, feel free to tweet at me, at Katie Dalebout, or use the hashtag Wellness Wonderland. I'd love to hear your aha moments. So grab your headphones and listen on the go, or cuddle up with a notebook as we dive in deep with authentic conversations right here in Wonderland. Welcome back, everyone, to another week of the podcast. I'm so excited for today's long-form interview, and I'm so excited to be back up and running weekly, bringing you as many episodes as I possibly can. It is amazing. So really quick, I'm going to keep this intro super duper short, but I just want to remind you, join the Facebook group if you haven't already because it's the best way to connect to me, to connect to other listeners all over the country, all over the world, and just like I say, discuss how inspired we are by this week's guest and talk about what we've learned. So this week's guest, I'm not even going to get into who she is. I'm going to let it be a surprise for when you hear me in two seconds. Um... But really quick, she has a couple. We recorded this almost a year ago. That's how like backed up I have been with getting these amazing interviews out. And I re-listened, and I just I really love her. She's become a great friend, and I really love her work as well as her as a person. And she has some really cool things coming up. She's doing this goddess retreat in Brazil. She just emailed me about it, and there's yoga, acai bowls, dance, DIY beauty with local ingredients. It just sounds fantastic. So the link to that is in the show notes. Um, And then she's also doing social media consulting from a healer and shamanic perspective. So that's really cool. And she says she has a a course coming out at that. And she's speaking at the Wellness Summit in the Well Summit, I think it's called, in Boston this year, um, which is coming right up too. So that's in the show notes. Those are just some updates from her that she probably would have talked about if we recorded this like last week, but we recorded it like a year ago. So we have really cool things coming up. Um, together and separately and I just wanted to share those so the main thing to check out of hers is her ebook um, which I love I promote it's the only smoothie superfood ebook I love it's just so fantastic and amazing so you'll hear about that I think we talk about it if not there you go I'm talking about it now but the link for that is also in the show notes everything you need is in the show notes um I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Again, join the Facebook crew, and I say it every week. You know it. If you want to support the show, tell a friend, share it with a friend, leave a review on iTunes. Just do so when you're on your computer. Give me five stars or however many you want to give, but it really helps the show a ton if you support it by that way. And then if you want to donate to the show, you absolutely can if you feel moved and then you get different swag at different levels. You can get like a session with me or, you know, to suggest a podcast guest. All the info on that is on my website. So yeah, there's so many cool things happening for me that I've been working on that I cannot wait to share with you that I'll probably be able to share in the next um, couple weeks. But yeah, I'll just leave it at that and that will make you come back for more, I hope. But all right, you guys rock. I love you and I'll talk to you soon. Today, everyone, I have a criminal in Wonderland. Not just any criminal, but a breakfast criminal. So, Cassinia is here in Wonderland to discuss everything that she does. And for her, it all started on a trip to Hawaii, during which she fell in love with the Aloha culture and eating local foods and colors and superfoods and acai bowls. And so when she got back to New York City, she was just not ready to let that go. So she started a breakfast movement, and now it's moved far out of New York City thanks to Instagram. It's here with me in Detroit. It's all over the world, and it's spreading really, really fast. So ultimately, breakfast criminals are about taking care of themselves, eating delicious food, and spreading good vibes. And now she has an amazing ebook to do this with, and these really beautiful heart bowls that she sends out. And yeah, I love her. We've been friends for a while. I love you. <laughs> yeah. 
And I'm just so excited to get you to know you better, hear your story, hear your mission, and just chat. So thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you, Katie. I'm I'm super stoked to be on your show. I'm obsessed with your podcast. What you're doing is incredible, and I'm really excited to chat with you and get to know you better. Yay! Yeah, this is gonna be a blast. So. First, I want to hear the story. I kind of like told a little bit of the story, but Mm -hmm. I want to um, hear the story from you and how you found acai bowls and, you know, tell me more about, take me back to that, that trip in, in Hawaii and how you Mm -hmm. got the idea when you came back to start sharing them in this way. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it started a little before Hawaii. Oh. Um, So I got Instagram a few months before Hawaii because my friend convinced me to. And I was just following all these nutritionists and holistic health coaches and just um, incredible chefs and getting all this inspiration. And I had just watched Food Matters and David Avocado Wolf became my ultimate hero. That'll do it. (laughs) (laughs) And so this whole new world was unwrapping in front of my eyes. And I was realizing that I'm in complete control of my body, of how I feel, of what I fuel it with and I had played with veganism, I had played with you know different diets, I would played with raw foods and I was at the peak of all that experimentation when I went to Hawaii and before that I saw acai bowls only on Instagram, um, Loni Jane to be exact. She was, she only had a few thousand followers back then, she was just this tiny account posting delicious foods and workouts. And- so about what year was this? That was, let's see, I think it was end of 2012. Okay, so it's been a couple of years. A couple of years, yes. Because I feel like Instagram as a whole has really grown just in the past few years. Myself. It has, yeah, and especially the food part. And yeah. it's, it's just amazing how it's growing and how everybody has the opportunity for their voice to be heard. And that's how it was for me. And I was so inspired by the community when I tried my first acai bowl for real in Hawaii, I was just hooked. I felt amazing. I felt energized and I wanted to have it every day. And I did have it every day while I was there. And then I came back to cold New York in the middle of winter. And I did go to a local juice bar and I did have the acai bowl, but it was just not the same. And I think the difference was that in Hawaii, it's just the vibe is different mm-hmm. and people live more fully and they're more vibrant. And of course, the foods are also more vibrant because they're more local. So I thought, well, if they can serve me that, I'm just going to make it. So I started making them and I was recently single. I, I took this you know, huge step to break a relationship and... Um, I was in the middle of a job, so it was kind of a huge transition. I didn't even know if I would would have been able to stay in America at that time because I'm from Russia. And I went shopping. I went home shopping, and I saw this heart bowl in the corner of a discount store and just spoke to me, and I bought it. And it was around the same time when I started Breakfast Criminals, and I just started posting my smoothie bowl creations in that bowl. And to me, it really became a symbol of starting your every day with love and approaching making your foods as a creative process instead of something that you have to do you know I'm against rules I'm against all of that you know Mm. Um, it's more about just nurturing yourself it's about nourishing your body it's about having fun with it yeah yeah we couldn't be more on the same page with all of that and ditching all of the diet dogma and all of the just Mm. yoga dogma and spirituality dogma, all of it, and just forgetting the rules. And that's why I love you and your mission, and it's so aligned with the Wellness Wellness Wonderland and Breakfast Criminals are like two peas in a pod. Sisters. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, And, you know, I feel like we should tell the story of how we we found each other um, through – a hashtag. It was like a hashtag love. <laughs> we were just talking about this before the call, but we both were um, listening to Gabby Bernstein and Chris Carr talking Crazy Sexy Miracles and found each other through the hashtag on that beautiful, loving event. And so it's really cool. You know, social media can, can bring us together and then come to find out we have like a million mutual friends with Anita Goa, who's been a, mm. a guest and 
Tara Styles and and all these super cool people um, from that live, you know, in all different places. But we've been able to connect with each other and and other people, and it's just it's such a beautiful thing. And and I really like Instagram so much for I really love that platform. And so I would love if you could kind of talk about. So you said you had just gotten Instagram before that trip, but why why is Instagram your your main platform and like? Why are we, why do you think that we're so drawn to that? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I work in social media, so I'll try not to get too technical with my answer. I can talk about social media for life. You know, when I was 14, I would, I remember my dad's friend would come into our little office space and we would sit there with my dial-up internet connection and super old computer and he would explain to me what a blog is. And then, you know, a year later, I had my own blog, and I was obsessed with it, and I was doing live journal, I was connecting with all these people from around the world, and that's how it really started for me, and from there, I did a lot of social networking sites, there was a time when I was obsessed with Facebook, and and Twitter, and um, at some point, all of this just became so commercial-driven, and I feel like the reason why Instagram is still very valuable for people is because it's not as commercial. We all know there are sponsored posts now and a lot of bloggers are paid to say what they say and to post what they post. But still, in a way, it's still a very open community. It's like a huge ocean where through the power of these little hashtags, you can find your people, you can find your community and you can expand together. And, you know, on Facebook, there's a little wall of adding a friend Um, Mm -hmm. Well, on Instagram, there really isn't. You know, you don't have to send a request and wait and see if somebody wants to be a friend with you. If you really connect with the person, you follow them, and you get inspired by what they have to say every day. And I think that's incredible. Well, And, of course, another part of Instagram being amazing is that it's super visual. Yeah. And it gives us a chance to be creative, and it gives us a chance to share the world the way we see it. Yeah. Oh, I could just... I, this is going to sound silly maybe to people. I mean, not to you, but maybe some people listening. I love Instagram. Like, I could cry. I love it so much. Like, <laughs> I, it has brought me I, – I wouldn't be talking to you without it. Mm-hmm. It brings me so much joy. And I think a lot of people look at social media as a negative thing in their lives. And I think that is just kind of a reframe of – who you follow, right? Like, just clean it Mm. up, you know? Like, I only follow inspiring people, people who Mm. fill me up, people who I, who I love. And if I find something that that's not inspiring to me, or that's, that's negative, I just don't let that in my feed, you Mm -hmm. know? And it's really, really become a powerful way to connect. And, And it's so beautiful. And I, I just, I love inspiring on there. I love being inspired on there. It's this constant exchange of sharing information, you know, like mm-hmm. regramming things that inspired you and just, con- it's this constant exchange and it's it's just so beautiful and yeah, I'm, I'm really it grateful is. for it. And you know what, I, I can see, you know, there's a side of people who still don't think social media is important, but you know what, it is. And for me, it changed my life, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I never knew that I would call myself a food blogger. And I guess that's what I am now. And it's just because I started posting pictures of my breakfast on my way to work or wherever every morning. And it's crazy, you know, the opportunities that it gives you, like now I work with incredible people, you know, I'm, I'm here able to connect with you and um, I was able, what's most important, to find my community and I found a lot of soul sisters through Instagram. <laughs> One of them is Anita Goa. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like anything else, it's just the tool and it's how you use it and it's what energy you put in it, that's the energy you'll get back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. And, um, you know, I, I think, so let's, let's go back, you know, a bit to your story. So, so you're from Russia, you came to New York, and mm-hmm. you, um, you, how long were you in New York, you know, before breakfast, pre-breakfast criminals, and how did you mm-hmm. kind of m- make that transition to, to actually start doing this um, after so, you came back? Uh-huh. I actually am, I'm from Russia, I was raised in Australia, 
And then um, I did my degree in journalism in Moscow, where I'm from. And then I got a graduate degree in fashion business in San Francisco, where I was for three years. And then I came to New York. So I was in New York probably a year um, before I started Breakfast Criminals. And I did a bunch of fashion internships. I had a little Devil Wears Prada moment in my mm -hmm. life because I thought that's what I wanted to do. Um, and then I was just able, after going back and forth, back and forth, and after um, being a social media manager at Guild Group, also a company that I envisioned as the company I want to work for, and you know it, it worked out, visualization happened. Mm -hmm. After all of that, I kind of found my niche, and now I still am at the same company. I, I still have a full-time job besides Breakfast Criminals. People think I'm crazy, but I do. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah, we'll oh talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, in my in my daytime, I work for a luxury consulting company. It's called Visual Therapy, and the the reason why it aligns with Breakfast Criminals is because what we do is we create wardrobes for people, and the cool. approach is very holistic. It's about aligning your inner world with your outer image, and by aligning the two, you become the best version of yourself. And of course, wellness is a big part of it, and um, that's why my interest in it comes as well. And so. I've just been combining it, you know, and um, I, I started posting pictures on Instagram and then a few months later, maybe eight months later, I reached out to Sweetgreen, um, a salad chain shop that I'm completely obsessed with and I said, hey guys, I'm obsessed with everything you do, your kale is freaking the best in the world and <laughs> I want to work with you in any capacity and so we ended up doing a little photo shoot together and I was like, oh, okay, maybe this is the time in Breakfast Criminal's life when it's it's time for it to have a home and a website. And so I quickly just, you know, threw together a WordPress website. Thank God I know a few things about that. And I had a website, and that kind of became the platform for um, the recipes and kind of having a hub, really, and developing the brand. And, of course, back then I didn't think of it as a brand. It was just me and my breakfast. But then brands started reaching out to me on Instagram and um, it kind of snowballed from there, you know. I feel like when you are doing something that you're truly passionate about and you have something to share with the world besides your selfies, mm -hmm. uh, not, not to be derogatory about selfies, I think it's great, but um, you know what I'm saying, you know, it's totally abused. <laughs> um, I think when you're really following that inner fire in your heart, then people resonate with it. There's something different about the vibrational message you're putting out there and people can feel it through Instagram. And so when you're doing that, it's just automatically expands. Yeah. When you're doing what you're, and I've found this time and time again in my life, like when you're doing what, and we've talked about this on the podcast too, when, when you're doing what you're meant to be doing, the universe will support you. It will conspire in your benefit to make it happen for you. And that's mm -hmm. happened in my life. It's happened in your life. And it's happened in the lives of all the guests I've had on the show, actually. And mm -hmm. it's really cool to see. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because, you know, right now some big things that I have been wanting are coming into manifestation. And it's kind of just an interesting thing because it's like, that's right. Like, that's how it's supposed to be. And I'm just, it's, it's happening and I'm supported and it, I must be doing the right thing if it's happening. Because mm -hmm. if not, you know, I wouldn't be supported in this way. I can't, I can't control this. Like this was, Breakfast Criminals was bigger than you. So it's just it's so beautiful to, to hear that story. So where did the name come mm -hmm. from? How did you decide <laughs> on that name? <laughs> you know what? I'm still accepting stories for that one. Um, <laughs> there are several versions. Um, one of them is that I shoplift the groceries that I make my breakfast with. The superfoods <laughs> are pretty expensive. <laughs> um, another one from Anita Goa so is funny. that it looks so good that it feels criminal to eat it. Yes, I remember her saying that in the video <laughs> with you. I love, I love her so much. I love her too. Um, I don't, I don't 
honestly know where it came from. It just, I was meditating a lot and it just came to me. I just started doing a lot of Strala yoga with Tara and I kind of was entering that new zone in my life. And it just came to me, you know, and, you know, at some point I do want to do something really fun and have a contest so that yeah. my friends and followers and everybody submit their stories and then I'll take one as my own. Do it. I really like the shoplifting one. Like, I think that's so funny and goofy. <laughs> like, that's hilarious. And that's from my friends at Le Pan Quotidien. Oh my God, that is so funny. It's funny, the the name Wellness Wonderland came to me in a yoga class, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I was in college. And I remember, um, I remember, like, I think it was like in the, in actual Shavasana, it was like this much mm-hmm. longer thing. It was like, wonderful wellness wonderland <laughs> with, like, it had like lots of W's and it was much longer. And then I was able to like, <laughs> you know, co- come off, come down off my yoga high and like narrow down to two words, but it's such a great name. Thank you. Yeah. It, I mean, yoga, just like the I name makes it. you feel so happy. Right. Right. Well, we'll get to that question, but <laughs> you know, you know yeah. the drill. Um, <laughs> but okay. So we've got this amazing movement. We've got this amazing Instagram now. So you found that heart bowl. So how did what was next with the heart bowl and why is that so meaningful what do they represent and and how has that expanded and grown since Mm -hmm. well you know ever since i started posting my pictures and i at first it was just a lot of feedback saying you know i never ate breakfast before and now i'm so inspired and every morning i create something new thank you so much and that's what kept me going and i didn't think that i'm stupid for posting my food every day (laughs) Because I don't come from a foodie family and my parents would always say, you know, you're spending way too much time thinking about food. So finally, my freakness got recognition and I found just as many weird people that are crazy about food as me. And so... Awesome people. I know, awesome mm-hmm. people. Awesome weird people, that's the best, who love food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great, great healthy food that nourishes us. So... Um, And then I started getting so many questions about where can people get the heart bowl. And I I did a lot of research. One of them was from me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I did a lot of research and I looked everywhere for it, but it was not available. So, and then I was thinking, you know, I really want to give people a chance to have it because to me, it's really been like a shining star, like a guide that reminds me to start every single day with love to take it easy to be meditative while I'm making my breakfast and um, you know one of the other things why I love the little ritual of breakfast criminals is because I am a very fast-paced person especially living in New York and I have no patience whatsoever when it comes to food and so I would usually by the time I'm done with preparing my food it's pretty much halfway gone yeah and so I can knowing- relate to that <laughs> Okay, I'm not the only one. So knowing that first I need to make it look pretty, I'm going to take a picture, I'm going to post it. It really slows me down and it gives me that right space of mind. And, you know, ultimately I was like, it would be so great to offer people the heart bowl and hopefully that will be the same symbol for them. And it also makes an amazing gift. You know, if someone came to me with a heart bowl with a message written on it, it would just totally make my day, my month, my life. It's so meaningful. It does. It happened to me recently. <laughs> it really does. And it's, I, I just can't stop smiling because especially what you said there, I want to highlight, you know, I come from a whole array of background with food and, and eating stuff. And the big thing for me was that, you know, when I would, learning to feed myself and learning to nourish myself, I'd be cooking for myself, but so anxious with that whole process that I'd be eating while I was preparing the meal and then by the time I like sat down to eat it I was like full because mm-hmm. of, of that and but you would was, still eat yeah and Instagram just like you said really helped me with that you know mm-hmm. I, I don't really post as much about my my food anymore but in like the early stages of like recovering from that mm-hmm. it really helped me because just like you said I, I would be like oh the, I'm gonna actually make this look good for myself Mm -hmm. and then post it. But sometimes it's easier to do things for other people Mm -hmm. as backwards as it sounds than it is for yourself. 
So by having that reason to make something look pretty, I actually did. And now it's more second nature and I don't really have to do that. I can just do it for myself. But I noticed one time that like I would be scrolling through Instagram and I would suddenly, regardless of my physical hunger, be starving, you know, like scrolling mm-hmm. through the photos, looking at people's photos and being like, oh my God, that looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Mm-hmm. And then I was just, I asked myself this question. I was like, why does food on Instagram look so effing good? Like, why does it look so much, so good, so much better mm-hmm. than the food that I've been eating? Mm-hmm. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I was like, it's because they've been mindful with it. They've taken the time to make mm. it look good. They've paused, right? Like, you know, mm. whether you say a prayer, or whether you just take a deep breath, or you just like tuck a little gratitude into your food, or mm-hmm. take a photo of it and, and send it to other people, like that pause before mm-hmm. digging in is so powerful. And, you know, anyways, It hit me, and so I was like, okay, every meal I make can look that good too. I Mm -hmm. just have to pause. I just have to do it. And I think that your movement that you've created depicts that 10,000%. I mean, it's just the most beautiful, you know, manifestation of that exact piece of advice, you know, that I I, I really found. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's, it's really, really beautiful. So... The next thing I kind of want to ask you about, so yoga became a big part of your life. And um, and so I'd love to just kind of talk about how you found your way to yoga and, and strala yoga and how has yoga kind of impacted your life? Oh, I'm so excited to talk about this. It's everything. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I have been exposed to yoga for some years. I probably tried my first class maybe 10 years ago back in Russia and it, one of the first classes I took was Kundalini Yoga at, at my gym and now I don't practice it but back then it was one of the first experiences and it was it really blew my mind because the yoga teacher said you know and now using our breath we will hold our arms up for five minutes and I was like no way no way I'm gonna even though you know it was very athletic all my life I was like I'm, I'm not doing that and I did, and I, and I did it, and I felt fine, and there was some vibration going through my body, and I was a little buzzy, and, you know, it was it was definitely an eye-opening experience, and um, from there, it was very scattered, because I really feel like you only really get into yoga once you find the right teachers that resonate with you, and so... I was here and there um, doing yoga in San Francisco. I had a couple of really great instructors that really got me hooked on it. And then in 2010, in the end of it, it was a funny story. My um, foodie friend, um, her name is My Hungry Monster, (laughs) Mm -hmm. she posted on my Facebook wall saying, hey, do you want to come over to Bangkok and have a pot thai with me? And I promised this story is going to end with yoga. (laughs) And so... Uh, I just sat there, you know, writing my thesis and being overwhelmed with grad school. I was like, you've got to be kidding me, Bangkok? And then the next morning I woke up feeling, you know, I've been really exhausted. I really need to take a break. I want to go on a yoga retreat. So I started looking at yoga retreats in Mexico and Puerto Rico and kind of South American Caribbean. And it was so expensive, definitely not student budget friendly. And then I was like, you know, just for fun, let me see how much the tickets are to Bangkok and how much the retreats are in Thailand. Because Thailand is known for all this Eastern kind of spiritual thing, right? And so um, it ended up being cheaper to fly all the way to Bangkok and then to Phuket and then take a boat to little island of Koh Noi and go on a yoga retreat there than to go to Mexico. So that's what I ended up doing. And... It was just incredible. It was tiny island and no technology, bungalows with all kinds of insects in them. It's a very simple life on the beach. And we did yoga every morning and every evening. We did heart chakra meditations. I was exposed to Reiki and EFT. And I was reading Paulo Coelho for the first time, um, the alchemist, just actually alchemist for the first time while I was there. So it was like a whole new world for me and I was so excited about it and visiting all these holy places and I think that's when when I 
really got into yoga and I knew, okay, this is a tool that helps me feel amazing and grounded and I just want to do it as long as I can. And so that's how I really got into it. And then I moved to New York in January 2011 and I was just bouncing around between different studios and then uh, I was living in Nolita, which is a few blocks away from Strala Yoga. And I was just checking on some new studios, you know, and one of them was Strala, Tara's studio. And the reviews online said that the owners of the studio, Tara and Mike, they welcome you very personally and they come and speak to every new person and they touch you and it feels great and it's fun. I was like, okay, I'm going to go check it out. And so I stepped my foot there, I think it was also around January 2012, so right when I started Breakfast Criminals, and that was it. I don't, I have no desire to go to, to any other studio, and, you know, Tara's whole idea is to move how it feels good to you, and um, to find that sweet place in your own body, and listen to it, and tap into that radiant energy that we all have, and that's what it's been for me, and I feel like it's created this amazing expansion. I think that's one of the reasons Breakfast Criminals is you know, on our earth. <laughs> yeah. And so this year, earlier this year, I did yoga teacher training with Tara, and I already led my first retreat that was yoga and superfoods in November in Nicaragua with my friend Abby Miller, who's also a yoga teacher, and that was just sharing that gift of using your body and moving it to fun music. It was just out of this world. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just buzzing talking about it, you know, oh, but that's too. just, yeah, <laughs> that's just one part of it. To me, there's also a whole other side of yoga, which is um, my studies with uh, my, my uh, mentor, David Harshida Wagner, and I know he's great friends with your mentor, because <laughs> yeah. I've seen them posting texts on Facebook, you know, spiritual gurus talking to each other. I love that. Anything. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but... Uh, I've been meditating with him for probably about three years now, the whole time I'm in New York, and it's been really life-changing. So this year I'm doing an advanced uh, meditation and spiritual leadership training with him for nine months, and um, so far it's been nothing short of amazing. And, you know, through that I'm really learning the ancient Eastern traditions of what what is yoga really, you know, because yeah. a lot of it is so commercialized now that it's being lost of what yoga and its wisdom is. And what I'm finding out that really the purpose of yoga is to experience reality. Like, you know, my mom is really scared about me doing all this meditation and yoga stuff because she's afraid that I'll go crazy and like go live in a temple. <laughs> but in reality, yoga is here to help us connect those outer layers of your life with the inner layers and with your soul and to experience it more fully and practices like meditation and yoga they definitely help with that and that's the best way to do it because you know you have your body and your soul for the rest of this lifetime and so you better enjoy it and be comfortable with it well said i am nodding like crazy <laughs> over here no one can see me but mm -hmm. yeah i i couldn't agree more and your, your story and, and how you found yoga is, is so beautiful. And as you know, you know, it's a, a huge part of my life as well. Mm. And I just, I think that, you know, you said it all right there with that, the fact that, you know, it's, it's one thing to go and meditate in a cave all day and, and that's great, but it's a very, very different thing to actually use this stuff in the real world, right? Like it's mm -hmm. tough out there in New York, in Detroit, mm. wherever you live, like there's so much going on. And I think the real practice is to be able to use those tools in life, not to just use them, you know, on this yoga mat or, you know, when you're just meditating in, in your home, like it's to, exactly. to use it. It's practice for a reason, it's practice for us. It's about there. taking it off the mat. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, it's not a coincidence. You know, there's this really magical, mysterious side to yoga. And there's no coincidence that the name for Wellness Wonderland came in a yoga class. And I will confess to you, every great idea that I've had about breakfast criminals, collaborations, or expansion, or trips, 
has come to me uh, in a yoga class as well, you know, yeah. especially there's this girl, she's studio manager at Strella, Anna Gannon, and she's part of our Fearless Heart mm-hmm. Challenge. Yeah. And especially it's in her class. Whenever class is done after she's led it, I'm just buzzing with ideas and I come up to her and I'm like, Anna, can I do this? And can we do this? Let's do this together. I have an idea, you know, this and this and this. And it's because yoga allows us to be still for a moment. Even if your mind is chattering, your body is doing the work for you. And so you're energetically tapping into places and spaces that you won't connect to if you're just sitting there on your computer you know there's some things that need to be experienced you can read a lot you can watch a lot you can listen to your friends or mentors but until you get on the mat and do your work you're not going to have the full experience of that divine amazing awesome energy yeah oh that again so well said it's just you're like reading my mind we're so (laughs) on the same page with all this but But yeah, I mean, it's so true. It's like, you know, and people who maybe they don't have a yoga practice yet or maybe their practice is is something else, like, just think about, like, where you get your ideas. And it's usually, you know, in our case, like, in a yoga Mm. class or when you're in the shower and you're not Mm. thinking and you're just connected to your body and you're in the flow or when you're on a walk or when, you know, even if you're, like, driving but you're listening to music and you're present, right? It's all about, like, when Mm -hmm. you're present in the moment, those new thought forms can come in, but you're not going to get great ideas when you're, like, zoned out, like, eating popcorn, watching TV. Like, that's fun, (laughs) too, but, like, that's a separate thing. You know, that's Mm. not present. That's, you know, something else. And there's something to be said for relaxing and and, and doing what what you want to do. And, and, you know, I'm all for pleasure. However, it's there's something to be said for these new thought forms and these new ideas, opening yourself up to them and allowing them to flood you. And I think Mm -hmm. that that's what what yoga really does for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, for us it's yoga, for other people it can just be painting or sitting still or being with their kids or cooking. You know, it can take so many forms, it's just about the way you approach it. And there's this great talk that I watched yesterday that again, my friend, my hungry monster, she sent to me. Uh, it's by Pico Iyer. He's a very famous travel writer, and I'm obsessed with traveling, so that totally resonates with me. And so he did a TED Talk in which he was saying that after visiting countless countries and going so many places, seeing everything there is, there's nothing more important than going nowhere, you know, mm. just staying with you and being still. That's the only way you can appreciate all the experiences that you have in your life and all the places you see. If you just keep going and going and going and going, then you kind of get caught up in it and you really stop appreciating it. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 You have to send me that TED Talk. I want to watch it. I will. Yeah. Sounds amazing. Um, So with that, you know, and this probably has come to you in in a yoga class, but can you tell us a little bit about the long-term vision for Breakfast Criminals and the expansion and some of the goals you have for it? Well, I'm going to have to go do some yoga to give you the answer. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, You know, right now I'm just really opening to the universe and letting it flow. Um, At some points I do have my bursts of creativity and at this point, the vision for it really is, the, the guidance that I'm getting is that I want it to be more community-driven than just based on me and my personality um, because there is an incredible community of people who are doing similar things and who believe the same things, and I really want to highlight all of them and bring them forward and share it with the world. Um, that's one thing. And then another thing is... You know, I was just telling you I led this retreat in Nicaragua and that was yeah. magical and I want to do more events and looking at Tara, I'm so inspired. That girl is like totally rocking it out. One week she's in the Maldives, another week she's in London and people are just happy to be around her and do what she's passionate about because it makes them feel good. So that's really inspiring me to believe that, yes, it is possible to just travel the world and share your passion and that's what I see happening. Hopefully... You know, I can just travel the world and spread the love of superfood breakfast prepared with love and moving your body with ease and lead retreats in gorgeous places like Bali, 
or Greece and and Russia, my home. And yeah, I think I'll just take it there for now. Take me with you. <laughs> <laughs> the God, whole time I was better. just like, I want to go. I want to. Yeah. I want to lead them with you in Wellness <laughs> Wonderland. I. That's that's the vision I just got while you were speaking. I was like, <laughs> I think we need to collaborate and yeah. bring all the people I listening with us amazing. too. Yeah, definitely come all with us. Yeah, I think that's the the long term vision for sure. I think we're onto something with that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I'm also doing the meditation training, and part of it is also leading other people into meditation and into um, really transformative experiences through that. So. I'm really waiting to see what will unfold. So far, it's been really eye-opening to me on my own life. And I know the further I get into the training, the more it will be me learning the tools, how to help others feel the same way. So I'm really, you know, just being open and seeing where this all will take me. But I know that there will be a way where it all will come together. And I'll be like, oh, how did I not think about it before? This makes so much sense. Yeah, I'm always saying this on these podcasts, but it's like that Steve Jobs quote of you can't connect the dots moving forward. You can only do it looking back. And I think mm. I've seen that in my life. Like I had no idea I would start a podcast and mm. do the things that I'm doing, but I just follow the next right action and then it just like happened. And I still have no idea where things are going to head. And sure. same same with you. You know, I think it's just following where you're passionate, where you're excited, and just trusting that, you know, the universe will take care of the rest, and it does, and mm. um, and you, you're just in such a grounded, good spot. I just, I'm confident that only good things are ahead, and it's, it's beautiful to witness. Wellness criminals. Yes, yes. Or Breakfast Wonderland. Oh, God, Breakfast Wonderland. They How both awesome have a good that? ring to it. I like I like wellness criminals too. I mean, they're just both good. There's something yeah. to that for sure. Mm. Yeah, we need to hashtag that later. We should. <laughs> so, Katie, how did you decide to start your podcast? I want to hear that story. Let's um, reverse the roles. Question. Yeah, yeah. No, this is rad. Well, I. It's funny because I studied um, broadcast journalism in school, and I don't know if they've shared. I think I've shared that on the podcast, but with. With that, I had to take a lot of radio classes, and at the time, I was like really frustrated by that because I wanted to be a TV news reporter and I wanted to get to the broadcast classes, but I took these radio classes, and so I really liked the art of storytelling on this audio platform. And I'm a very auditory learner, so I, if I read it, I'll forget, but if you tell me, I'll remember. And mm. um, and so, yeah, so I loved consuming information that way. I loved listening to audiobooks and listening to podcasts and listening to NPR. And I just really kind of immersed myself in, in that because I just liked to consume information that way. And the more and more I started to listen to podcasts that I liked, the more and more I was like, I could do that. I, you know, mm. like, and I had studied radio and really liked that form of storytelling. So I, I had it in my mind for a while. And then, you know, at the time I was like super to a fault actually into wellness and health and superfoods and, um, and nutrition. And so that's where my passion was, was all in that one particular area. Mm -hmm. And so I, I already had had the blog for a while. And then I was just like, yeah, I think I'll start a podcast. And I had no clue what I was doing, but, mm -hmm. um, but I just did it. And you know, I, I, like I said, like I had no microphone. I had no like mm. way to figure out actually how to do it or what to do. But like my boyfriend at the time was like really techy. So I was like, help mm -hmm. me figure this out. And, and he did. <laughs> and I'm so grateful for that because it mm -hmm. led me here talking to all of you. And, and so, yeah, I mean, it just, it was one of those things. It was like, I think I was meant to do it. I think I was meant to be in the ears of a bunch of people all, all over the world. And, and I didn't know how, and I didn't know, you know, the technology or, or how to figure it all out, but I just did it. I just said, mm -hmm. like, F it, let's go. It's not going to be perfect. And mm -hmm. people showed up. And I didn't know if I would get any guests or any guests that anyone would want to listen to. But I just, um, you know, somebody asked me once, or actually people ask me this all the time, 
how do you get these people to come on your show? How do you mm -hmm. get these amazing people like you and Tara and Gabby and, and all Really all amazing guests, seriously. Uh, really amazing. Yeah, and so I was like, um, and I thought about That's it for a second. because you're amazing. Well, thank you. But I, mm -hmm. I think actually the, the real answer is because I ask so many people to come on mm -hmm. the show that statistically – some people have to say yes. <laughs> and so I just, you know, it's true. I just, I put myself out there and I, I'm shameless and I ask people and I just say like, in such an authentic, genuine way, like, mm -hmm. I think you're really awesome and I really am uh, familiar with your work and I, I show them that and I tell them that and your work has affected me and I'm so grateful for you and I'd love to, to talk to you about that basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and have a bunch of people eavesdrop and that's really how it started and that and then people would just say yes and they showed up I'll never forget I think um you know Latham Thomas was one of the very first people mm. that I had on the the podcast that wasn't like my coach or my friend that mm -hmm. I like personally knew and um, I remember I was like on a plane to New York and I had like sent an email and I sent a bunch of emails to a bunch of people and a bunch of people had said no. And I got this email from her saying yes. And I was like, wait, what? Like, oh my God, this is so weird. Like, why is she saying yes to me right now? And I love her and I loved her. And I was just like, this is so cool. And so then from there, like she probably doesn't even know this, but it gave me the confidence of like, okay, Latham Thomas said yes, like now I'm going to go ask Tara Styles, and I'm going to ask mm -hmm. you. And it's like, you know, it's just, it, it, you just need that one yes to, to kind of open the door for things. And I, I hope that mm -hmm. people kind of take that away from this episode that like you don't have to know the long-term vision. You don't have to know like what's next. You just have to get the heart bowl and everything mm -hmm. else will fall into place, you know? Sorry. And and it's it's just, it does, it does. And I have no idea where I'll be in a year. And if you would have told me a year ago where I would be now, you know, again, when I started this podcast, like no one was listening, literally zero people <laughs> were listening. And mm -hmm. now people are listening in all different countries. I mean, it's crazy. Like Joe Cross was, I'm, this is becoming like the Katie hour now, but um, <laughs> this is an interesting story I that I have to tell you. But um, when, when Joe Cross was on the show, he, um, we, we had met actually in person a couple of times because he'd come to speak at Detroit. And, and mm -hmm. so we'd like developed a friendship. And, and so he called me this summer, like months and months after our, our episode had aired. And he just like rang me on the phone. I was like, um, all right. And, <laughs> and he was like, hi, Katie, I, um, I met this girl in Spain on some island at some party. And she came up to me and she was like, Joe Cross from the move, you know, Joe Cross. Hi. And I was like, oh, cool. I was like, so she watched your movie like she she knows about Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead. And he was like, no, 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 no. She had no clue about the movie. She knew me from your <laughs> podcast. And she was and the first thing she said to me was, do you know, Katie? I'm really like I'm really into this girl. She has this podcast. Do you know her? I think you were on it. And and so anyway, so she like he like we ended up like three way calling her and dialing her in. And she was like. <laughs> You know, it, it's, just, it's just cool. Like, there's people so everywhere cool. listening to the podcast. And um, and since then, I've, like, met her, and she's, like, super awesome. And mm -hmm. hi, Elsa, if you're listening, which you probably are. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I've just met the coolest people who live all over the world and who just, like, like this. Like, just like you said, you know, with Instagram kind of being your – your platform, like, I feel the same way about podcasting. Like, mm. it's allowed me to meet the coolest people, not just the guests, but mm -hmm. it started just the guests, you know, like, meeting them yeah. and letting them become mentors and, and building relationships with them. Mm -hmm. Like, that was really groovy. But now it's really about the listeners and, like, mm. they're becoming such an amazing part of this. And I, my, my vision, just like you said, you want it to be more user-generated, like, my vision is to have this kind of be more user generated and, and maybe talking to some of them and, and hearing mm. some of their stories. So mm -hmm. that's my, you know, new year type of type of goal for that. But oh, yeah. yeah. And you know what, guys, you, you are listening to us. The funny thing is that a lot of people, ta pe a lot of time people listen to podcasts or follow bloggers and then they think, oh, well, they already have so many followers and listeners. My comment doesn't mean a thing, but 
guys it does and we love hearing from you and it makes our day and it's always a two-way street and it's not just about us doing what we love and putting it out there but it also us hoping that it will resonate with some something inside of you and hopefully give you some more value and that little spark in your yeah. wonderland yeah exactly and it's it's so beautiful to see and it really just it's it none of us want to feel alone you know like that's why I started what I started and that's why breakfast criminals exists you know it's like we mm -hmm. just want community and that's why we love social media that's why we're all addicted to it because I think as humans we need it you know we it's a need, healthy addiction yeah we need <laughs> connection we seek connection and it's just kind of changed forms over the years but it's it's beautiful and you know I love the how visual Instagram is and I said that at the beginning that I, I loved it so much and it's my favorite but really you know I think if I really had to choose my favorite is podcasting like this is mm. my jam you know mm -hmm. I love speaking <laughs> I love talking to people and I love you know I, I even though it's just like me alone in my apartment right now with my microphone like I'm actually talking to a ton of people and <laughs> you and it's just that's so cool and yeah it's, it's beautiful yeah it's so cool. you know what i think in the, in the end all of what we just talked about goes to being fearless the whole idea is that you know i've found that when you're doing something you love you will find that fierceness inside of you to approach people and to just go and do it. Yes. If you're not fearless enough to go and ask Gabby Bernstein to be on your podcast, probably you're not passionate about uh, about it enough. You know, yeah. probably it's not your jam. But if you're like, this is what I'm gonna do. This is what feels right, and I'm just gonna go and do it. Then th this is how you know that you're doing the right thing with your life. Yeah. Do you feel the same way? Ten thousand percent. You took the words right out of my mouth. That's mm. so well said. Yeah. Word so good hmm. yeah I mean it's beautiful so now um, I want to get personal with you and ask mm -hmm. my signature questions so let's go for it so this is a good one kind of what we were talking about before so what are you doing in your life that you're afraid of but you're doing anyways afraid of um what am I afraid of? I'm I just did a fierceness meditation before our talk, so I don't feel afraid of anything. Um, the only thing that scares me is the fact that I am in America and my whole family is in Russia, and I'm choosing to stay in America because this is where dreams come true. Um, yeah, this is the only real thing that scares me and bothers me, but thank God for Skype and thank God for airplanes, and I'm going to go there in two weeks. Yay. Yay. Um, I, I love, I just love how you said that, where dreams come true, and it, that's so <laughs> cool. It just made me, like, grateful, and I love that. <laughs> um, all right, can you walk us through your morning routine and the specifics of how you start your day, maybe the first few things you do when you wake up, and why that's important for how the rest of your day goes? Oh, yes. I've been doing meditation every morning. I've really changed changed up my routine to try to go to bed earlier before 11 hopefully most of the nights and waking up around 7 um, having a glass of warm water with lemon and apple cider vinegar maybe some honey and going straight into meditation you know and here I want to quote my mentor David Wagner he says that the first minutes of your day are like an early childhood and the way you start your day really affects how the rest of it goes. And so that's why it's so important to really take it easy and take the time uh, to tap into the day and to guide yourself in it. I used to wake up and check my Instagram, right? And, and like try to answer emails and it, it was crazy. Sometimes my phone would even fall on my face because I would be still laying in my bed. Mm -hmm. And now it's really, I found the sweet spot of waking up, having my warm lemon water, meditation for 30 minutes, making an amazing, delicious breakfast. I never leave the house without having breakfast. That's always been the rule. And now that, that would be a criminal. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. That's like the first thing I think about when I wake up. What's for breakfast? 
And so I have a nice breakfast and then I get dressed and I go to work. And while I'm on the subway, I'm posting my morning picture on Instagram. I love that. That's, he's a wise man. And that is so <laughs> true for the, for the morning routine. It's, mm. I agree 10,000%. So on the other side of that, evening rituals, when you're not talking to me late at night, like we are mm. now, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you do um, in the evening, the last few things before you wind down for the night? Well, I do want to make talking to you my evening ritual. Yeah, Can me too. Do? Maybe we should just pick <laughs> this up. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I really also tried to, again, I used to stay with my computer up until late night doing work because there's always more work to do. But more lately, I just feel like disconnecting and I try to turn off my phone at least one hour before I go to bed. Um, and I ha always have a lot of herbal tea and... I have my model in my hand. Maybe I'll do a little meditation. Maybe I'll do Shavasana relaxation and read. I love reading. I have my Kindle. I have my Bhagavad Gita that I'm going through now. And I have my lessons with David that I'm reading. And, you know, just staring at the wall or staring inside instead of staring at computer screen. And, you know, it's really putting you in the right spot. And also you sleep much better. Yeah, that blue and light. Yeah, isn't, yeah, isn't so good. We not good. we had our Wellness Wonderland sleepover with Sean Stevenson, who told us all about that blue light. So that's amazing that you mm. shut up, shut down the phone and technology at least an hour before bed. I think that's powerful. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't do it every night, but oh know, no, me neither. It's just but, what I strive for. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And you know what? You didn't ask that, but can I add one more ritual yeah. that's in the middle of the day? Please, please. Okay, this is something I just came up with recently, oh, I'm and it's just life changing. And I hope you guys all do it and try it. Oh my it gosh, it's drum amazing. roll! <laughs> okay, so uh, have you seen this YouTube video, Jessica's Daily Affirmations? No, but I want. Oh to. my god, Katie! Okay, you have to see it. It's this three-year-old tiny curly blonde girl Aww. just jumping on her sink and saying. I love my house, I love my mom, I love my sister, I love my hair, I love the food in my house, I love my school, you know, just loving oh everything. Oh my gosh, yeah. And so, it's like me on my trampoline <laughs> daily. <laughs> you know, inspired by that, I used to, in the elevator on my way to my apartment, I used to be checking my phone, uh, checking Instagram, even though there's no reception, I'm like still clicking, clicking, update, update, update. And then I would come home totally like, dazzled with the day and what I just was doing in the elevator and once I even lost my keys they fell in between the elevator and the floor <laughs> because I was checking my phone oh, so I was like okay okay this how did you is get it. them that stays I had to wait for the next day for my super to get it yeah it was a whole story oh, but man. that was a lesson learned and now as soon as I come into the elevator it's the gratitude elevator if even if there's a person with me if there isn't if there isn't I'm just louder I just do that thing and I count things that I'm grateful for today like today I said you know I'm grateful for being feeling awesome at work I'm grateful for my morning meditation I'm grateful for having a delicious sweet green lunch I'm grateful for talking to Katie in a few hours I'm grateful for feeling amazing in my body after doing Bali last night and just like all the things that are coming to your mind one yes. after another and then by the time you reach your door of your home, you're just in such an awesome place. And you remember the awesome things that you did that day instead of being, oh, I'm so exhausted. Give me food, you know? Oh, my gosh. That right. is, okay, I want this everyone goes, to try yeah, it. Yeah, yep. <laughs> that's homework. I mean, I can't even. That's so Especially, good. you know, if you have a family or roommates, that's the energy that you want to bring them if they're waiting yes. there for you. Yeah, yeah, wow. Okay, so I don't have an elevator. I'm on the ground floor. <laughs> However, <laughs> maybe I can do it like in my car or yes. like, yeah, just I'm going to do it. Walk all from the, the time. car to your house. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, I work from home, so I might just like be doing it all day long. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But that is so good and so mm -hmm. powerful. And oh my God, I'm glad you shared that. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. So good. So what is the um, the biggest thing that you've learned from the community that you've built so far? 
that it's not about me. You know, it's about not what about uh, I ate. <laughs> and it's not about food. It's about the message that I can share with the world. And it's about listening to what people have to say in return. And it's about just, you know, making a two-way street and about expanding together instead of just, okay, I'm going to post my pictures and turn off my phone, you know? Yeah. It's always, you know, it's just so much more valuable and powerful when you share it with someone. Happiness is only real when it's shared, you know? Yeah. And whenever I get all the food that, you know, companies send me, my happiest moments are sharing it with people and my happiest moments in the whole of Breakfast Criminals is doing my superfood breakfast with wildly inspiring women during which I make breakfast for a woman that has inspired me and we just chat and I interview her. And just sharing my passion and learning about other people, you know, and their journeys because there's every person has something to teach us, every single person. Yes, word. Staying open. So true, yeah. Relationships are assignments, not just romantic relationships not just friendships not just family but every single person Mm -hmm. you encounter is an encounter to learn something from that's Mm -hmm. so spot on so good oh this conversation has been amazing so Mm. let's wrap up with some quick fire questions okay i'm nervous all right all right you gotta (laughs) stretch it out do a little yoga all right (sighs) favorite color purple favorite yoga pose uh dancer Favorite superfood? Oh, man. Raw cocoa nibs. Not acai? Whoa. <laughs> Left they, field. They come close. They come close. <laughs> um, what's one misconception about breakfast and, and superfoods that you feel like you're kind of clearing up for people? Uh, people think that it's very difficult and it's not for them and it's only for vegan people who like raw food <laughs> when in reality it's it's for everyone and everyone can have benefit from it. I'm not vegan and I'm not raw. Let right? me clarify that. I'm a flexitarian. Yes. Yeah. Same over here. Okay. Love that. Um, what is your favorite part of living in New York City? Oh, man. The people. Oh, the energy, well, the, yeah, the people and the energy of the city, it's just amazing. You know, one day I can be taking class with Tara Styles, another day I can be listening to Chris Car Talk, and another day I'm interviewing Nitika Chopra for my website. It's like crazy, you know, so many so inspiring, cool. driven people. Yeah, it's, it's, that's so true. When I was in, in New York, I felt like I was running into more people there than I, than I do here, even where I live. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, there's such a, community and vibe about the city i love that Mm -hmm. next time we have to have breakfast oh my god breakfast criminalize you all the way oh my gosh it's gonna be amazing i can't wait yes coming soon to instagram feed near you people you heard it here (laughs) first (laughs) um what is your favorite day of the week friday favorite hour of the day um oh man i would say 9 p.m Oh, when we were when oh, you were talking yes. to me. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite vegetable. Uh, kale, all the way. Favorite fruit. Banana. Um, what is one practical self care action that you take for yourself every day that's a non negotiable? My warm lemon water. Mm, yeah, me too. Mm. What's your favorite way to relax? Shavasana. <laughs> um, okay, hold on. I'm just joking. I'm taking it back. Um, I love taking salt baths. I'm oh, really too. I've been obsessed with it. Yeah, me too, especially in the cold. Mm-hmm. What is the best thing that you've eaten in like the last week? Oh, man. Uh, oh, okay. I had this, I've been doing some sort of workout every night this for past five or six days. And I went to Sweet Green the other night after yoga and I made this insane kale salad with all this local produce and sweet potatoes and spicy cashew dressing. And I was there sitting, eating it alone and it was just blowing my mind. That sounds so good. Like, I want it right now and it's nighttime. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> that sounds so good. Um, what does your ideal day look like? Uh, my ideal day would be pretty much my any weekend day. Uh, I think I had one on Saturday. So let me just tell that, tell you about oh, that. Yay. Um, so I went to Strala and did the 11 a.m. class with Tara. Super sweaty, super packed, super fun. All the fun people are there. If you're ever in New York, you guys have to do it and come yeah. say hi because I'm always there. Latham comes there too all the time and really cool people, you know. Um, so, and then I would go get brunch with a friend. Uh, last Saturday it was with Amanda Morgan, who I also met through Strala. We went to the Butcher's Daughter, amazing spot in New York. I'm sure you know about it, Katie. Mm, yeah. And then I went to um, market. Um, God, I'm blanking on the word. Uh, to buy groceries. Farmer's Market on Union Square. I had been waiting for that moment for a very long time because I was not available other months before that. And so I just got so much produce. I got five different kinds of uh, squash and pumpkins and I made all these soups and greens and spinach. You know, everything was local and amazing. And so then I came home and I just cooked all that and I did a little bit of work. I did some recipe development and then ideally on a Saturday or Friday night, well, since we're talking about Saturday, um, I love going to movies. That would be the ultimate wind down to the day after having a delicious dinner. Mm, me too. Well, I just want to come hang out with you because that sounds I know. so amazing. You have to. We, it's definitely going to happen for sure. I'm mm -hmm. manifesting. Um, what is your favorite place that you've ever traveled to? Uh, so many. Um, I would say Switzerland more, more, most lately. I stayed at a Buddhist monastery there exactly a year ago. It always happened through a synchronicity that happened through inst meeting through Instagram again through a hashtag. And it was just, yeah, it was just amazing being in the mountains on a lake in a beautiful chalet, doing yoga on the deck and then hanging out with Buddhist monks and learning from them and eating their delicious food. It was just something, you know, it's not about where you go. It's about what eyes you bring into it, mm. and what energy you're, you're ready to receive. And I was in the right place, and I just let it all in. Wow, that's beautiful. So cool. If you could have a superhero power for a day, what would it be? Time travel. Mm. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Mm. Um, what's the best advice you've ever received? Best advice. Hmm. Hmm. You know, it's not really a device. Yeah, I guess in the end it is advice. During my retreat with Harshita the other week, we did a meditation where we went back into our childhood. And during the meditation, we imagined our grown selves coming up to our child self and just hugging those little shoulders in and saying, you know, Saying whatever you need to say for me was, you know, everything's going to be all right. You're going to have a great job. You're going to have a great life. You're going to feel pretty at some point of your life. It's going to be fine. And just, you know, going back to that place and remembering that child and knowing that everything turned out fine. Everything's great. And it's mm -hmm. only going to get better. That is so beautiful. I've done a meditation similar to that. And... It is powerful. I'm so glad yeah. you shared that. Mm. Um, what is your favorite movie? You like going to the movies? Mm. Yes, I love movies. Um, God, it's hard. I, I so many movies. Um, one of my very favorites is... Um, do I want to say that or do I want to say another one? Uh, you can say them both. <laughs> I love Good Will Hunting. Oh, nice. I've never seen it. I know it's Oh, oh you I need have to see to. it. Yeah. You have to. And, yeah, I guess I'll just say that. There's so many. This is one of them. And, okay, one more. Childhood movie. My favorite movie growing up was The NeverEnding Story. Oh, that's a good one. That's yes. a good one. <laughs> favorite book? The Alchemist, because I even got a tattoo after reading it. Oh, no way. 
Yeah. So cool. I I love that book. Such a good book. Mm -hmm. um, favorite song? Favorite song? Well, it really depends on the mood. Um, hmm. I love Eat, Pray, Love soundtrack, so anything from oh, that. Oh, yeah, it's so good. That Florence yeah. and Machine song is like, I mm. always think of that movie when I hear that song. Mm. So good. So, okay, final question. As mm -hmm. you know, the name of my blog and this podcast is The Wellness Wonderland. So when I offer that term to you, to live in a wellness wonderland, what comes up? Oh, my God. So many rainbows and stars and kale. And microphones, the best kind of microphones, <laughs> and beautiful you in your boho dress jumping around in fields offering people showers of <laughs> wellness and health and abundance. Oh my gosh, that sounds so amazing. You just forgot one like <laughs> super important thing though. Unicorns? No, no. <laughs> Heart bulls and you. Oh, yes. Duh. Yeah, it's always there. Yeah, I'm always there. of course, of course. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. And thank you so much for being here, Casina. I mean, this was just so much fun. Thank you, Katie. It was awesome to be here. Thanks for listening. You made it all the way to the end. I'll be back next week. But until then, let's stay inspired and keep this conversation going. So tweet at me, at Katie Jailbout and our guest with your aha moments from this conversation. And like the Wellness Wonderland on Facebook so we can all hang out there and discuss how inspired we are and how we'll apply it in our daily lives. And never miss another episode or post from me by signing up for email updates on thewellnesswonderland.com. See you back in Wonderland.